Hello and welcome to another episode of Thank You For Not Defending. We've had three in three days here, I hope you appreciate it. If you don't, I'll sod you, I don't like you either. So, well, the third to go we've done, we've done uh, the Rangers goal, uh, they conceded the second one against Queen of the South, we've also done the second goal from the Inverness Partick Thistle game, and we'll finish by looking at the second goal, there's a theme running here, uh, it was scored by Ross County, uh, the fourth goal in the game between the match of uh, Motherwell and Ross County, a uh, four goal thriller I guess you could say, to each, last minute equaliser, and this is the goal. Don't want to really go on too much about this because there's not a whole lot wrong but it's just one thing I'd like to highlight and it's something I've seen kind of one particular model player do this quite a lot and there are, I think I believe there's a good reason behind it but this is the whole team doing it and you'll see what I mean in a minute first of all let's just kind of have a quick run through the goal first kind of quite a long build up here because they move it out right first of all where Motherwell initially deal with the first ball, they get it away, and you think that's maybe the chance. But Ross County rescued Jackson Irvin, plays out wide to Joe Cardell, I think I'm right in saying. Has the low ball in, finds Garding, Garding back to Dingwall, what a finish, loves Stevie Saunders' celebration there. So, right, let's have a look, closer look at this now. And we'll just take it from when the ball comes back out to Jackson. There's not really any need to go to earlier on. I mean, there was a challenge from, I was about to call him Nicky Law, uh, Josh Law, which where he could have been a bit stronger and maybe try to take the man as well as the ball. And then it might not have come to this. But what I want to focus on is what happens after they get the ball down the left. So Irvin rescues it, plays it in. One thing I'd actually stop and notice is that that's Lionel Ensworth. And that's his marker, which I'm sure is Jamie Redford. Record, sorry. Ainsworth tracks the run and then just kind of gives up. Now, this is the kind of problem with Ainsworth. This is the last minute of the game. He's got to be busted and I got to follow his man in the box. It doesn't have anything to do with what happens after here. And in, in his personal sense, he's lucky. But you can see why managers don't trust him and why he's been on the bench so much this season, despite his undoubted talent. Is that it's the last minute of the game. He, he's played for a half. He can't be that tired. He's got to be giving it his all to get back in there. But anyway, like I said, that's incidental. Cardo gets to the byline and his ball, positive his ball across. You can see right away, this doesn't look like a box in the last minute. Because there's not really a whole lot of multiple players in shot. The reason for that is that so you can see the whole kind of line here, and the line continues, there's a couple more players there. And everybody, there's a, you'll see as I kind of come on to it, there's a whole row of Motherwell players guarding the six yard box. Now this is something I've seen Steve McManus do quite a lot of the time. And the reason why I think he does it, even though he's sometimes susceptible to a ball getting dragged back and somebody finishing, is that I know in Scottish football, particularly, coaches will often tell attackers in this position, don't try and pick out a man, don't try and be too fancy. Fire the ball across the face of the goal. And we'll tell the striker to be expecting the ball to go there. So he probably knows this. He's an experienced defender in this league. So he's trying to block it off. And also, you, you want to keep the balls out of what they call the corridor of uncertainty. Because it's a nightmare for defenders to deal with and goalkeepers once it gets into that area. And as a striker, you don't even really need to get a full contact on it. You can just let the ball hit off you. And it could be a goal. But at the same time, there's no need for the entire team to be doing it. There's one guy who needs to be blocking that cross. He could be doing it. He could be doing it. He can maybe even do that. There's a couple more out of shot. There's no need for them all to be standing in a line. So then you look at this. It's Gar Gardine has, if this ball comes in a little bit in front of him, can easily finish that. Dingwall, who it eventually comes to, could, well, can and does finish it. And even, I think that's Martin Woods on the edge of the area. That could be cut back to him. He'd have, he could control the ball and have a free shot to go from 18 yards. Could easily score from that. You'll see, is it, you'll see what I mean as it goes on further. Look at all of these bodies! What are they doing? They're not even doing anything! Dingwall is all alone in, a, in the penalty area in the 90 odd minute of the game. Nobody within, what, a radius of 10 yards? Maybe even more? I mean, that's pretty bad. They're all, they're all back there. But there's no sort of... It's, I can say there's no organisation, but in the last kind of minute, it's hard for a centre half and in such a desperate situation, like McManus to then start pointing and go, you go there, you go there. Players just have to be smarter themselves. 
and somebody has to recognise that you can't leave a man who is 14 yards out just completely free. Fair enough. It is a terrific strike once it comes to him. And again, love Stevie Saunders' celebration there. <laughs> Showing more emotion than uh, Willem Dafoe in Platoon. A little bit happier. And yeah, that's just... Uh, it's a poor goal to lose. Because I know they're desperate and it's the last... You know, pretty much the last kick of the game, but you, you just you still have to be smarter in those situations. And Mullow weren't, they haven't really been this season, and it's why they're struggling.